afternoon. Good evening na pala. Good evening to everyone. <coughs> okay, ang aking topic for today, tonight, is actually how to study the King James Bible rightly divided. So, so I believe, madami sa inyo dito, you are but but King, King James Bible believers, and I believe also that many of you are aware of right division. But the things I'm going to share today are actually a product of my of our own journey within being a King James Bible believer and also being a right divider. So ito ay influenced by uh, our own research and also by listening to Pastor Mark Pagsani and I have initial works in the Dr. Davies, but we praise God for allowing us to see these things and a prayer for tonight is makatulong sa inyo. Amen. Amen. And one thing talaga na makikita natin is that to study the scriptures is not a specialized task for special people. Amen. Hindi, ibig sabihin, hindi pag for a studious ka, mag-study ka. Or nagsasady ka dahil studious ka. Uh, it, for this reason, it is a command given to us in 2 Timothy 2, right? And to study is to actually set our mind to focus on a particular theme. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, we're not called to study theology, we're not called to simply study doctrine, we're not called to simply study uh, sciences or criticism or Greek and Hebrew. We are called to study the word of truth, rightly dividing it. Amen. Amen. So we have to pay attention to the word of God. So tonight, our prayer call is that it will help you for us to see ways that we have learned how to study the King James Bible, rightly divided. So before we move on any further, let us first come to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. And we thank you that we can trust your word and that we can hear and listen in for the things that you want us to see. We pray, Father God, for your spirit of wisdom and revelation that you would allow us to illumine in our mind and open it to the truths that we may let your word have free course and may it have precedence over us today. We commit our sight to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Probably this is just a review to many, but let me start with the fundamentals. It's not that fundamental Baptist Akapaya, we start with fundamentals, but uh, it's fundamental because it's rudimentary. So I believe these uh, fundamentals are already in grace. But my prayer, my prayer tonight is that not only would it be ingrained, but that it would influence the way that you handle scriptures. So first, let me share to you some fundamentals of studying the King James Bible rightly divided. First is, a Bible believer believes in the present inspiration of the scriptures and presently believe it is the King James Bible. Now this is not katamisip, let me turn your attention to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16 to 17. I'm sure this is a very familiar passage to you, but in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 to verse 17, we would read these words from our Apostle Paul. This is what the Apostle Paul says. He says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Now one of the essential skills in, in studying the scriptures is to first identify the main clause of the passage. Now in the complicado, you just see that it's a complete sentence from verse 16 to verse 17, and mapapansin the period is in verse number 17. Verse 16 and verse 17 ay napagita ng colon, yung dalawang dot dot na ganyan, colon, okay? So, it's one whole sentence. And a one whole sentence would always, would always have, a one whole sentence would always have a main clause. 
Now, a main clause will always determine what the passage is all about. So, kung gusto niyo malaman kung anong what the passage is talking about, determine first and foremost the main clause. Truth is, so many misunderstanding of Scripture comes from ignoring completely the main clause, but going through the details and imputing the meaning to the details without understanding the whole. So the main clause of this passage, the second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16, is simply, it's actually a compound, a compound clause. The first verb clause would be, as Paul says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Now, I want you to notice something in your Bibles. Uh, what did you notice with the linking verb is? It's italicized. Now, do you have any idea why the King James translators or even the translators of modern Bibles, why do they italicize things in the Bible? Do you, do you, do you have any idea? Huh? Brother Alex? Okay, it was supplied by the translators. So, they say that it's not in the original Greek. Okay? Original Greek. That's the language So, it's not in the original Greek and I concur, concur because the original Greek phrase is Pasa Grafe Theonustos. So, it's only the word pasa, which you get the word all, and that's an adjective. Then you have grafe, which is feminine and also a noun. And then you have teonustos, which is a compound word from the word teos and the word nustos, or read or uh, breathe or breath, something like that. Now, it's all in the nominative case. So in Greek grammar, this is actually called a nominative absolute. Now, okay, we shall not intimidate sa pagi Greek Greek today, but a nominative absolute is basically defined by the Wikipedia according to English and Greek grammar, is that it's a grammatically independent element of a sentence conveying additional circumstances present in the English realized as a noun phrase and a participle or adjective. So, you have a series of words and it's all in the nominative case and there's no verb there. Okay. Pero ang problema is, it's a grammatically independent element of a sentence. And guess what? A sentence must always have a subject, a verb, a subject, and a verb. Tama Always have a subject and a verb. So, kung may subject ka, may complement ka, wala kang verb, anong gagawin mo? So, the translators added or supplied the linking verb is or the, the, the verb is given by inspiration of God. Now, this is not a mistranslation nor an addition because when Greek grammar people will read this, they will automatically translate it as a present tense. Is. Bakit? Kasi the nominative in both ends would show that it is a linking verb dapat. Okay? So, is given by inspiration of God. So, that's, that's why they made it like is at that time. Now, the thing is this, some would argue that it is not a present tense inspiration because it's not in the Greek. Diba? Para lang to deny the present tense translation, the present tense inspiration, they would say that it is not in the Greek. Okay? Now, what's, what's the thing? Did you know that all scholars render it in all versions in the present tense. So, ibig sabihin, alam nilang lahat that when you render this, it's supposed to be in the present tense. 
But here's what the difference is between King James Bible believers and others. Simply this. The King James Bible believers believe that God presently inspired our Bible, the King James Bible, and we can uphold that it is inspired. Amen. Our modern Bibles, in one sense, they would say, all scripture is God-breathed, is present tense, pero tawin mo sila, do you have a presently inspired Bible? The answer is, kung originals lang po ang inspired. The original Greek ang inspired. So, oh, someone's no tongue there. On the one hand, you translate it present tense. Wala mo na sa scholars na nagawing past tense, di ba? You see? Because you cannot do anything against the truth, but for the truth. So they rendered it for themselves, yet they disbelieve their own work. And mahira po mag-start with a Bible study in the object, in the conception of unbelief. When we study the Word of God, it is always best to believe what we are reading. And I tell you the truth, since we have a presently inspired Bible, ang sabi ng Apostle Paul, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, for uh, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So since the word of God is presently inspired, it is presently profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The word of God is sufficient. You don't have to look at the Bible and says and say, uh, sigurado kaya ako sa word na to? Ito kaya yung sabi ng Greek? Hindi kaya may nawalang manuscript dito? Hindi kaya may namiss sila sa Antioch or or sa Alexandria or something like that? No. We're sure that what we have in our Bibles is indeed the God intended word to be there. And because of that, we believe the scriptures are sufficient. Sufficient for number one, salvation. It is written in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Many times, ang imagination ng tao is this. We need evangelism in the church. Let's hire and outsource someone who will seminar. Let's subscribe to a technique, evangelism explosion, yeah. uh, ano ba ba? Uh, buy one, take one, na sexy ko hindi. Each one, rich one. The multi-level marketing approach to evangelism. Kailangan natin mag-good soil. Kailangan natin mag-ganito. Magkailangan natin mag-subscribe to this methodology, to that series, to that material. No, no, no. The scriptures are enough. And that's why we believers we believe that. That is why we preach the gospel. Not the generic gospel, but the gospel that declares according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The gospel is enough. You don't need the tricks to deceive men into like buying a car or something. Minsan parang ganun na lang yung sa evangelism eh. Teknikan mo, kailangan mo ma-seal yung deal. Ano yun? Teknikan mo na lang eh. I remember there was one time, uh, minsan talaga wala nang libre sa mundo ngayon eh. May nag-invite sa amin to a buffet dinner. 
Okay. Kami ni Mrs. pumunta. Yung pala, that buffet dinner was going to sell us something sa uh, Astoria by Anderson, kung anong Astoria. So, they presented to us the advantages and disadvantages. And then they began saying, etong offer namin. Ito dapat, pero ito yung, ito na lang. Para sa inyo. Para lang sa inyo. It's like, sabi ko, teka lang, parang evangelistic techniques din yung minsan, di ba? Come as you are without one plea, something, savior, rescue me. Uh, di ba yung mga ganon? Yung, parang ito may special offer just for you. You know, just for you. But the scriptures are enough. When we preach the scriptures, it's actually, actually, ano yan eh? It, it's actually more debilitating or damaging to the gospel message when we shortchange the gospel. Bakit? You'd say to someone outside, believe in the DBR. What in the world is a DB, DBR? Ano yan? DBP? O ano ba yan? And besides, it's not only the death, burial, and resurrection. It's the death of Christ for our sins, His burial, and His resurrection. The scriptures are enough. Bisa masarap lang shortcut eh. Pero no. The scriptures are enough for salvation. It is enough for sanctification. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, the Apostle Peter writes to his audience, the, uh, the strangers in Gentile lands, saying, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. The word of God is sufficient for our sanctification. The Apostle Paul gave all the, all the commandments, all the charges for us to be sanctified. Did you know that in 1 Thessalonians, minsan naghahanap tayo, ano ba talagang will ng Panginoon sa akin? If the Lord wills, ganitong gagawin ko. No, God tells, told us already what He wills. It is God's will for your sanctification that we should possess our vessels in honor. That's a picture. The Word of God is sufficient for sanctification and the Word of God is sufficient for service preparation. That's why in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. What pastors need, what believers need, is not a doctorate or a master's or more education. It's just the Bible that you believe to be inspired and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So many churches today fall in disregard. Madaming nawawala sa doctrina because they forget that the Bible is sufficient for doctrine. Doctrines should not come from creeds of churches. Di para tayong Catholic. Di ba? Doctrine should not come solely on what the pastor taught you, taught you many years ago, tumanda ka na lang, etong tinuro sa akin, eto ako mamamatay, eto ang pangahawakan ko. That is not supposed to be where we get our doctrine. If we believe in an inspired Bible, the Bible is sufficient for doctrine. It's profitable for doctrine. I've been not in the ministry for so long, but I've heard so many times that an older pastor taught this. Is he wrong? Every time I heard that, hear that, ang sagot ko lang naman is very simple. If it goes against the Bible, yes. Hindi ka naman pwedeng, kahit na gano'ng kakatanda, matanda ang Bible sa'yo. And besides, kahit gano'ng kakagaling, God is still better than you. And that's God's word. Why correct it? Why question it? Why invent something around it? No. It's profitable for doctrine. It's profitable for reproof and for correction. Sometimes in churches today, pag kinorek ng salita ng Pahino na u-offend, at sabi sa'yo, opinion mo lang yan, pastor. Opinion mo lang yan, brother. Culture difference lang yun eh. Hindi yan, eh, ibig sabihin, 
pwede naman yan, ganito-ganito lang. No! The scriptures are sufficient for reproof and correction. What the scripture says is wrong, is wrong kahit anong gawin mo. Just take a knee, mas maganda pa yun. The scriptures are sufficient for preparation for service that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. It's sufficient for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. You want to be righteous? The scripture tells you. You want to be righteous in this dispensation of grace? The scripture tells you. You want to be righteous in this dispensation of grace? You don't go to, it's not going to church, it's not getting baptized, it's not doing good works. The truth is, it is not even our righteousness. Bakit? And sabi sa Romans 3, the righteousness of God. How do you get that righteousness? It is by faith of Jesus Christ. It's not your righteousness. It's not your faith. It's sufficient. We learn how to be righteous. We learn how to be righteous in this dispensation of grace. And scripture tells us that it's by trusting in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ who died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day, rose again. You only can do that if you have an inspired Bible at hand. Amen? Amen? Kaya merong, if you believe in an inspired Bible, then uphold it. When you get corrected by it, submit to the correction. If you get rebuked by it, then it's not your pastor talking. Misan yung pastor, walang kamuang-muang sa nangyayari. How would he know your circumstances at home? Unless yung pastor, chismoso. Kaya mag-ingat po mga pastor. Bawal po ang pastor na, hindi, hindi pwede kasi yung marites eh. Priest. Bawal yung pre-ano ng latest na pastor. You know why? Because besides, scripture warrants against, uh, warns against tail bearers. Pastors ought not to be gossips, talebearers, slanderers. So, so yeah. when your pastor corrects you of something, ah, magulat ka na lang. Paano nalaman ni pastor yan? Miss Pia si pastor? Wala. <laughs> it's the inspired word of God. It is sufficient, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So I pray that you believe in a presently inspired Bible. Amen? And I hope you do. Second, the second fundamental is that a Bible believer believes in the promise of God to preserve His pure word presently in the King James Bible. In Psalm chapter 12, verse 6 to 7, the writer of this Psalm, David, says, The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of fire, of fire, a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Now, if you would see, Psalm chapter 12 is a Psalm of David and it is categorized as a lament psalm, meaning in this Psalm, David is actually pleading for help can see that in Psalm chapter 12 verse number 1 where David says, To the chief musician upon Sheminit, a psalm of David. And then the first verse says, Help Lord for the godly man sees it, for the faithful fail among the children of men. Thus we would see that this is a cry for help. Okay, so this is a lament psalm. From here, David would lay a charge against mankind and God's judgment in verses 2 to 5 where David says, They speak vanity, everyone with his neighbor. With flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said with, the, with our tongue will we prevail? Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? For the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, said the Lord, 
I will set him in safety from him that puffed at him. So, we would see David quoting God's word himself. And the word of God declares God's judgment against the wicked oppressors. Now notice, this is the statement where David derives his confidence. How sure is David that God will judge the wicked? How sure he is? He is he. We see in verse 6 to 7, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. How sure is David? As sure as the words of the Lord are pure. Now, itong, ito ang tricky part na ginawa ng modern versions dito. In the modern versions, they remove the connection of verse 6, which is David's confidence, and verse number 7, which speaks about God's preservation of His pure words. Because in the King James Bible, it says, Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Now, the modern versions remove this and added an unwarranted by the Hebrew text direct object, which is us. Okay. So, NIV and the CSB, ang sabi nila doon, he, he will keep us. So, it's no longer the words of the Lord, like the them, okay? But the us, the problem is, the Hebrew constructs direct object that is supplied in the actual Hebrew word, it's in the third person plural, hence, it's supposed to be them. Sana na nakuha yung us. And us, if you would know, is a first person plural in the objective case. So my golly, nagkamali kayo ng translation? Parang what? Actually, yung second line, preserve is a third person singular because it refers back to the them only in the collective form. So the words of the Lord are few words. The Lord will keep it, keep them, and He will preserve it as a whole. You see? But what did they do? They moved it to people who are oppressed. That is why it's become, it becomes a mistranslation. As a result, this was amended by the New American Standard Bible so that ginawa pa rin nilang them. Bistado na eh. So, bakit mo nga naman ta-translate yung third person plural ng us? Para sa'yo, teka lang, na, naligaw sila ng konti dun ah. Bakit mo ta-translate ng ganon? So, the New American Standard Bible amended this following how the King James Bible rendered it. Now, we believe therefore that it is God's intended word to declare to us that the scriptures that we have is both pure and preserved. It's pure and preserved and it is David's respite amidst the prevalent evil and to know that the word of God is pure and preserved is indeed a great comfort. Bakit? Proverbs chapter 30 verse 5 says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. Now, do you know how significant that is? Ang sabi dyan, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. If you'd remember, how is a believer sealed in this dispensation of grace, sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise? Ephesians 1.13 says, In whom ye also trusted. After that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So here's the thing. Alam nyo ba na may mga pagkakataon na kapag may nagtanong na ibang religion or uh, I think grupo, they would ask you, Save ka na? Save ka na ba? And you will say, Yes, I am saved. And the next question is, 
ang yabang mo naman? Talagang siguradong sigurado ka sa kaligtasan mo? Ba ano bang ginawa mo? Actually, wala. <laughs> Actually, wala. It's all about the finished work of Jesus Christ. Because Scripture says, that's what we trust. After that, we heard the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation. We hear the finished work of Christ. We trust the finished work of Christ is sufficient. That is the one that saves us. So if they will ask us, Save ka ba? Yes! Why are you saved? Because of what Christ has done. I believe that is sufficient. Ang yabang mo naman, let Him that glory, let Him glory sa Panginoon. Why? It's not my work. Hindi dahil sa faithful ako sa simbahan, kaya ako naligtas. Hindi dahil nagkumpisal ako ng sandamakmak na kasalanan or repented all my life na kahit tulog ako, nagre-repent ako. It's not that. It's the finished work of Jesus Christ. At ang surety ko pa is the sealing with that Holy Spirit of promise. Because that's God's promise. And remember, God that cannot lie. Eh, paano kung may mali pala sa Bible natin? Paano pala pagdating sa Ephesians 1.13, hindi pala, wala palang word na trust dun. Which actually is, walang word, yung trust and believe in modern Bibles, tinanggal yung word na trust in the first line. But since we believe in a pure and preserved Bible, we believe that is what God wants to be there. Because He wants us to trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ. It is a shield to them that put their trust in Him. It's not bad to believe in an inspired, pure, and perfect Bible. Mabilis lang minsan mag-name call eh. Actually, one thing talaga dapat kakalimut na maging aware tayo is when it comes to name calling. Ang bilis mag-brand eh. King James Colt. Bilis. Oh, makita lang yung ano. Ay, baka ganito ka na. Delikado yan. Mas delikado kapatid yung walang Bible na inspired, pure, and preserved. Sa totoo lang. Hindi ko actually nag-gets eh. I, I thought, ano ba ang tawag sa mga religion sa mundo? Hindi ba yan faith? Tama, di ba? Tawag yan faith. The Baptist faith. The Catholic faith. The charismatic faith. It's faith. Ayan yung klaseng faith, yung unbelief, yung premise mo. Anong klaseng faith that you don't believe the basis of your faith? Ayan yung, paano mag-aral ang pastor? Diba? Tama naman, sabi, sino ba nagsabi wag, wag daw bigyan? Pahirapan yung pastor. Ang eh, hirap na ng trabaho ng pastor. Wala ka pang inspired Bible? Ay, mas mahirap yun. Kasi kung, kung wala kang inspired Bible, pagalingan na lang. Pag magaling magsalita, pastor. Pag magandang bihis, pastor. Pag pugi-pugi, pastor. Kaya siguro nagpastor si Pastor Jeter. <laughs> Buti na lang, hindi ganun confidence natin eh. Our confidence is in the Word of God. And that's what we study. Kaya mga kapatid, we have to study. So, the Bible believer believes in a presently inspired Bible, a pure and preserved Bible, and we also believe in a perfect word of God, which is the King James Bible. Ang sabi ng scriptures, Psalm chapter 19, verse 7, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Now, Psalm 19 is a Psalm of David, and it is categorized as a hymn, and it praises God in the creation. Now, remember, what tells us that everything is created by God. Hindi lang yan Genesis 
But many times throughout the scriptures, in the Psalms and in the Hebrews, in John, the Gospels, it tells us that God created the heaven and the earth. And kung hindi perfect yung salita ng Panginoon, then creation remains to be a theory. Just like evolution. Nasabi ng mga tao daw, mahirap paniwalaan ng Bible kasi sulat yan ng tao. Galing. Eh yung textbook ng evolution, sulat din ba ng Diyos yan? You see? You see the hypocrisy? The picture is the law of the Lord is perfect and the law contained the creation account that is reliable. The creation account is reliable because we have a perfect Bible. Kasi tatanungin na dyan, paano nakita ni Moses? Paano nakita ni Moses yung creation event and he was not there? The mythos that's prevailing is that Genesis 1.1 is a nursery rhyme. Sige daw, nursery rhyme. Kinder, pa-memorize mo from Genesis 1 hanggang Genesis 1.1 hanggang ending? Nursery rhyme? How would that work? A nursery rhyme, ano ba yung mga leron, leron sinta, umakyat ng papaya, something like that. Oh, Jack and Jill went up the hill. Those are nursery rhymes. Genesis 1 is not a nursery rhyme. Tanong yung si Brother John, yan ang kanyang Sunday school. Ang hirap kaya? Ay, parang wala ka pang Genesis 2, no? In the, Genesis 1 pa rin siya. Imagine, buwan na yan. Because that's how difficult Genesis 1 is. And nursery rhyme? Kalo, kalokohan, di ba? That's, that's weird. But they would rather believe everything else than to believe that there is a perfect Bible. But again, if there is no perfect Bible, then how come Moses can say in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 4, that he is the rock, his work is perfect? If the Word of God is not perfect, then why can we expect the work of God to be perfect? And if the Word of God is not perfect, then why did Paul say in Romans chapter 12, verse number 2, and be not conformed to this world, and be ye, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. If there's no perfect word, why is there a perfect work of God and a perfect will of God? Wouldn't make sense. Wouldn't make sense, right? And if there's no perfect word, bakit ang aim ng inspired scripture is that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. No, it's simply illogical. If there's such a thing as a perfect work, such a thing as a perfect will, such a thing that the man of God can be perfect, then how come there's no perfect Bible? And besides, bakit tinranslate din yung Romans, uh, Psalm chapter 19 na yan, na the law of the Lord is perfect in modern versions. Why translate something that you won't believe to begin with? Wag naman ganun, di ba? That's why we have to believe that there is an inspired Bible, a pure, preserved, and perfect Bible. So what's the problem? Bakit ayaw paniwalaan yan? It's plain and simple. It's unbelief. Unbelief that God can inspire His Word presently. Unbelief that God can keep His promise of a pure and preserved Bible. Unbelief that God says that there is the perfect Word of God. My friends, when we study the Bible, hindi dapat ganon. We, be, we begin with the premise of faith. That's why we are Bible believers. Sometimes, mabadali pa mamisconstrue. If you're a Baptist, pwede ka makbalik kay John the Baptist. Which, if magiging stricto talaga tayo, then my question is, 
bakit walang fundamental Baptist or Bible Baptist the moment ma-save, baptize agad? How come? We are Baptists, but we don't truly, thoroughly, and truly follow John the Baptist. Eh bakit yung mga pastor natin ang gaganda ng barong? Di ba? Bakit walang nagakamel skin? Yung belt, nako ako guilty dyan, di ako nagbibelt eh. Bigote, hindi eh, disqualified ako. Balbas pala, sorry, magkaiba pala yon. Balbas! Untrimmed hair, that I like. Kaso, pati facial hair, eh wala man akong buhok, paano yan? May calling ako magpasor, pa wala akong balbas eh. Pastor Jeter, pa disciple, paano ba magkaroon ng balbas? How to be you po. <laughs> Grabe, alam nyo ba, sa buong buhay ko, nag lang ako the first time nung kinasal. And every month, nagpapagupit ako, minsan, yun lang ako, inaahita ng barbero ko, libre na. Kasi pag nag-ahit siyang kaya, minsan feeling ko, ginagano na lang niya eh, kasi parang wala rin naman. Then I'm not a Baptist. If that's the case, it's a good thing, it's a good thing that John the Baptist is not our pattern. He's not even our apostle. He's not even an apostle. But we are given an apostle. An apostle of the Gentile, which, ironically, is one of the most neglected parts of the scripture. Be honest. Pauline focus is what is lacking in churches today. Pauline focus is actually things that are actually missed out. Bakit? Because na apekto na in having what kind of Bible you have, an inspired, pure, preserved, and perfect Bible. But that's not only it. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, we are given this command, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So a Bible believer not only upholds a pure, preserved, perfect, and inspired Bible, but we acknowledge and believe in the unique and distinct dealing of God to different audiences through different spokespersons in different dispensations. Sadly, all modern Bibles remove the only command to study in the Scriptures. Anong pinalit nila? Sabi ng NIV, ESV, CSB, God's Word Translation and International Standard Version, do your best. Yun lang sabi. Do your best to do what? Do your best. Parang walang sense. Sige daw. Sabi yung pastor, do your best. Do your best to what? Anong gagawin ko? Kaya misa, pastor, walang training eh. Ano ba dapat ko gawin? Do your best. What exactly? Ito pa isa. Sa NLT, sabi, work hard. Parang night commercial eh. Work hard. Ay what? So, ang pastor magkayod lang. So, daming busy work. Daming positive ano. Sabi ng New American Standard Bible in the 1977, 1995, and 2020, sabi ng Legacy Standard Bible and CSB, be diligent. Be diligent to do what? Stuff. Ate kung lalagyan mo nung direct be diligent study uh, be diligent word of truth. So, ibig sabihin ba niyan bitbitin ko lagi yung Bible ko kasi ata ako mapunta, dapat bitbit ko yung Bible ko kasi I'm doing my best. No. And besides, why remove the only reference to study? At nagkaisa pa sila. <laughs> All modern versions remove that phrase. Uh, that sentence, study. S- remove that word, study. So, wala nang study-study ngayon. It all boils down in ministry as positive thinking and busy work. Instead of a focused study to show ourselves approved unto God. Kasi hindi naman talaga tayo dapat nag-aaral for the, for the sake of the people. We're studying to be approved unto God. 
At alam niyo ba kung anong delikado diyan? Alam niyo ba ang mga member natin, madaling madali lang rin mauto minsan eh. Bigyan mo ng kwento 1, kwento 2, application 1 and 2. Sabi nila, grabe si pastor, grabing aral. Bigyan mo ng mga quotable quotes na talagang maalala nila hanggang sa pag-uwi. Ay, grabe si pastor, nag-aral. But sometimes, ang mga kwento means walang aral to begin with. <laughs> diba? Yung walang aral, kwent, daanin na lang sa kwento. Actually, the, parang may advice sa akin nun. Sabi niya, alam mo, Pastor Dwight, madali lang mag-preach eh. Kapag, kapag wala ka na masabi, banganin mo lang yung pulpito. Hindi talaga ako marunong yan eh. <laughs> Bakit kanina kay brother dyan tumunog sa akin? Wala talaga, no? Meron din naman. <laughs> Di ba? Hampasin lang daw para pag ano. Or, kwentuhan mo, nung unang panahon. Eh, paano yan? Kung 15 years old ka lang nagpipreach, wala ka pang unang panahon. Ano ka, baby? Pitus? Diba? <laughs> 15 years ago, I was a pitus. <laughs> Grabe, di ba? Wala kang kwento. Ang sabi ng isang pastor na sa akin, kung wala kang kwento, wala kang kwenta. But that is not true. Alam niyo mga kapatid, we are called to study, to show ourselves approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed at may method yan. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Para may nakita akong comment, hindi daw rightly dividing about the word of truth. Eh, yan o, ano pala yan? Rightly dividing the word of truth. Right division daw hath nothing to do with the scriptures. Eh, ano yan? Sometimes the plain sense is so ignored, common sense goes down the drain. To rightly divide is to simply recognize the naturally occurring divisions in the scriptures and this can be determined by three basic questions. Who is talking? Who is addressed? And what is being talked about? Wag pong i-ignore niyan. Because if the one talking is not our spokesperson, if the one being addressed is not you, then that's not for you. Tama? Make sense, di ba? Hindi ka pwedeng kumuha ng hindi para sa'yo. And one of the worst things that you can do is to misunderstand something because hindi mo na-gets kung anong pinag-uusapan. And worse pagdating yan sa Bible. Worse pagdating sa Bible. So many feel-good preaching today is essentially premised on ignorance of what the scripture passage is actually talking about. Kaya masaklap eh. What happens is that There, come, there, there happens to be false promises. In the end, just pa'y naging liar. Grabe, di ba? Grabe. By this, we observe that God deals in a unique and distinct way with different audiences through different spokespersons in different dispensations. And from here, we can say that God dealt in a unique and distinct way with humanity through Adam, Noah, and the patriarchs in the dispensation of innocence, conscience, and human government as well as promise. God dealt with Israel through Moses and the prophets, John the Baptist, Christ, and the apostles in the dispensations for Israel. But how about for us Gentiles? Wag natin kakalimutan yan. Because there's a special, unique, and distinct dealing for us. Ang sabi ni Apostle Paul, we are given an apostle just for us. Romans chapter 11, verse 13, the Apostle Paul says, For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. And this is repeated for a threefold witness in 1 Timothy 2.7 and 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 11. So, If God gives us an apostle, why don't we pay attention to it? Makes sense, right? Bakit nga ba normally nakakalimutan si Pablo? Why is Paul so minimalized, Paul so marginalized, and Paul so set aside? E yan nga yung pinadala for us. If not, that's blindness that's happening. 
We are also given a spokesperson for this dispensation of grace. If you turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1 to 7, Apostle Paul says, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of, gra of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word. Here's my question. Kanino po binigay ang dispensation of grace papunta sa atin? Sinong sabi? Anong sabi dyan? This, the, if you have heard of the dispensation of God which is given me to you, Ward. So to whom is the dispensation of grace given? Papunta sa atin. Kanino? Is it Paul and others? Or specifically, Paul lang? Eh kasi media, no? If we are Bible believers, we stand by every word of God. Eh paano sabi sa Ephesians 3, apostles and prophets? Wasn't Paul with Barnabas? Wasn't Barnabas a prophet and an apostle also in Acts chapter 11? Wasn't, wasn't Paul and Barnabas at Antioch kung saan he talked to Manain and the others who were called and na, 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 papadala sana sila? He was. So that's the picture. Paul is the main spokesperson in this dispensation of grace. So, if there is a dispensation of grace given to us, what is this about? Ito sabi ni Pablo in verse number 3. How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words whereby ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. So same same chapter pala. Binigay mo na kay Paul, then sa iba. Revealed primarily to Paul, transmitted then to others. Now, this is called the mystery program because it deals with us in this dispensation of grace. Now, some would say, pag sinabing mystery, hindi natin alam yan. No, no, that's not true. Mystery is revealed by God to the Apostle Paul. What's that mystery about? Verse number 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of His promise in Christ by the gospel. So how can Gentiles be fellow heirs? By the gospel. How can Gentiles be of the same body? By the gospel. How are Gentiles partakers of the promise in Christ? By the gospel. What gospel? Paul says in the next verse, Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of His power. So this mystery is how the Gentiles with the Jews become part of the same body by the gospel that Paul preached. That is why, mga kapatid, you cannot be part of the body of Christ apart from the gospel of Paul. Unless, gusto mong palitan ng ating King James Bible. Unless, hindi mo papaniwalaan what's clearly stated there. By the gospel. And because that puts us into the body of Christ, we are given a unique and distinct gospel that is given to the Apostle Paul for us in this dispensation of grace. And Paul writes about it in Romans chapter 16, verse 25, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. So, Paul's gospel is the preaching of Jesus Christ 
according to the revelation of the mystery. Now, what exactly is that? What exactly is that? Now, it entails that we go back to the gospel of our salvation. If you would turn your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, let me read to you the form and the flow of this passage. Now, remember, 1 Corinthians 15, in Corinth, the Apostle Paul addressed so many issues. So, Corinthians is written by the Apostle Paul, and he's talking to the church of God which is at Corinth, and the saints which are in Achaia. So, Paul addressed so many issues in Corinth, one of which is the issue na sabi nila wala nang resurrection. So, when you read this Gospel of Our Salvation, read the I as Paul and you as the saints or the church of God and the saints in Achaia, Corinth, and that would reach even to us today. So, think about it. The trouble in 1 Corinthians 15 that Paul is addressing is the denial that there is a resurrection. That's why in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12, Paul says in that verse, in that chapter, Now, if Christ be preached that He rose from the dead, how say some of you that there is no resurrection of the dead? So, that's the basic issue, okay? Now, keep that in mind. Balik tayo sa verse 1. Now, again, main clause matters. Okay? Verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. So what is it saying? That's the main clause. This is Paul declaring the gospel. Paramisan isipin mo rin, no? So many people deny this is not the gospel of our salvation. Ay, no gospel, oh. Sabi nila, John 3.16 is the gospel, but there's no mention of the word gospel in John 3.16, nor in the book of John. Ito, I declare unto you the gospel. That's the main clause. And the main clause is modified by a series of relative clauses, starting with, which I preached unto you. Now, that's past tense. Paul preached the gospel to the Corinthians. Which, second relative clause, which also ye have received. This is already past tense. They already received it. Bakit? Paul preached it, they received it. You see? So this gospel is already preached, this gospel is already received. And as sabi ni Pablo, third, mod, uh, third relative clause, and were in ye stand. Now, remember that change in tense, it becomes present tense. Were in ye stand. This is the gospel I preach, past tense. This is the gospel you receive, past tense. And this is the gospel you are standing in presently. So this is not about anything else but the presentation of Paul's gospel. It's not a pattern for how the Corinthians were saved. That would be a mutilation of the main clause. I declare unto you the gospel. If it's a pattern of how they are saved, this is ni Paul, this is how you are saved. But Paul didn't say that. I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. And then, Paul states again, verse number 2, by which also ye are saved. Once again, present tense, present passive. Ye are saved. Why? Because they are saved the moment they believe this gospel is sufficient. Hindi siya future salvation. Ye are saved. Hindi siya present progressive as in ye are being saved. It's ye are saved. Now remember, this may be in an epistle, but 1 Corinthians 15 is set as a discourse. Paul is addressing an issue against the resurrection deniers. At sabi ni Pablo, this is the gospel I preach. This is the gospel that you received. 
This is the gospel wherein ye stand. This is the gospel by which ye are saved. And then, as if like an aside, he says, If ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Does it mean na mawawala ang kaligtasan if you forget the gospel message? Does it mean na yung totoong ligtas, maalala talaga lagi-lagi yung gospel message? Then kawawa naman ako. Nung nalo sodium ako, I forgot what the gospel message is. But praise God, it's not my works that saved me. It's the finished work of Jesus Christ. And it's a present declaration by which ye are saved. And Paul says, if ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Why do they believe in vain? Because if they deny the resurrection of the dead, then they're saying Christ has not risen from the dead. That's believing in vain. E kung ano palang gospel ang pinaniwala mo if you don't believe in the resurrection of the dead? That's the point. If you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Paul says, For I delivered unto you, brethren, for I delivered unto you first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, here's a question. Yung phrase bang, according to the scriptures, is it Old Testament scriptures or Pauline scriptures? Kasi if you say Pauline scriptures, saan na sinulat ni Paul? But what is for, forgotten is that Paul preached the gospel. Paul preached his gospel according and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. So what's the mystery? Did you know that the Old Testament scriptures prophesied the death and the resurrection of Christ? That's why when Christ rose again, Peter said, David, a prophet, said that he will not leave his soul in hell. The resurrection of Christ is prophesied. Did you know that the death of the Christ is also prophesied. That's why in Isaiah chapter 53, you would see these words from the prophet. Isaiah 53 verse number 5, Isaiah says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. But here's the thing. Nung sinabi ni Isaiah, He, referring to the Christ, was wounded for our transgressions. Was he thinking about the Gentiles? Remember, in Isaiah 52, this is Isaiah talking to the nation of Jerusalem, the nation of Israel, addressing Jerusalem specifically. So when Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgression, he was talking to the people of Israel. And he's saying, the Christ is wounded for our transgression. But paano yung Gentiles? It was not in their mind. Hindi siya kasama sa our. Is it not surprising that when Christ himself said in Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So sabi ng mga Calvinist, elect lang yang many na yan. To which I would say, I agree, but define what the elect is. Because remember, Israel is also called the elect of God. So whoops, they didn't see that coming. Diba? When it comes to Israel's dispensation, Gentiles ay walang kinalaman. That's why we are aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. But when Paul came, Paul took this Old Testament prophecies according to the scriptures and by revelation of God of the mystery, ang sabi niya, Christ died for our sins. 
and that He was buried, and that He rose again. Ang Arjan is both a Jew and Gentile audience. If you go back to Acts chapter 18, Apostle Paul is talking in the synagogue to both a Jew and Greek audience. So sa kay Paul, kasama tayo. Even sa resurrection, Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 4, verse 25, that who about Jesus Christ who was wounded for our transgression and was raised again for our justification. The benefit is for us Gentiles. Nasalina tayo. Because that's our apostle. That's our gospel. That's our program. Okay, it's important, very important, to keep the mystery and the prophecy separate. The mystery program through the Apostle Paul is unique and distinct from the prophetic program of the twelve apostles and the prophets of all time. One of the proofs in Scripture is that Paul takes Old Testament prophecies and then reveals a revelation of God according to the mystery. And one of the things that I begin to understand is this. Kaya pala madaming messianics at madaming hudyo today galit na galit kay Apostle Paul. You know why? Because Paul, to them, appears to be mutilating their holy their holy scriptures. But what they do not know is this Apostle Paul is sent by Jesus Christ himself the, perf the fulfillment of the law to give us Gentiles the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. And this revelation of the mystery is for both Jews and Gentiles that are one body in the body of Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, Apostle Paul did write, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, we have been all made to drink into one spirit. Jew and Gentiles are of the same body by the work of the Spirit. It's not Pastor Mark or any pastor dito sa mundo that would put us into the body of Christ. No. It's the work of the Spirit. And you get the Spirit as a seal. In Ephesians 1.13, it begins, it, we get it the moment we trust in Christ. After we heard the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation. That's why balik na naman siya sa gospel message. That is why Paul's gospel is essential and pivotal and foundational for people to be put into the body of Christ. That's why he is a spokesperson in this dispensation of grace in the Lord's mystery program. And because of this, Paul can say that God, that Jesus Christ gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Now, Bible believers pay attention to these naturally occurring divisions of the scriptures, recognizing the unique and distinct dealing of God with different audiences through different spokespersons in different dispensations. And this is all rooted in believing that we have an inspired, pure, preserved, and perfect Bible that we are commanded to rightly divide the word of truth. I think we'll end this session now. Nakaisang oras na rin ako. But we'll continue tomorrow for part two with looking at the basic approach to studying the King James Bible rightly divided. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word and we thank you for the truth that you have given us an inspired, pure, preserved, and perfect Bible that we are commanded to rightly divide. Allow us, Father God, to pay attention to the Word of God and allow us, Father God, that the truths that we receive from your Word, 
Let it simply burn in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.